this idea of Area 51 and fear, we talked about fear quite a bit there, but now we're talking about this being rekindled in the news lately. There was this rush, and a matter of fact, it happened on social media, I think, through a couple and of podcasts. People uh, were supposed to, uh, to, and, uh, to rush Area 51. And they were saying, hey, if the only way we're going to find out about this mm-hmm. is we have to go ourselves, and uh, mm-hmm. something like a million people signed up. It was yeah. incredible uh, what happened. I think it's actually that. supposed to happen in September, right? September 6th. I don't know the date. It could very Somebody well be, said yeah. it's supposed to happen in sep- Maybe I'm wrong. But I think they've called it off, have they not? I, I mean, I'm not sure. I, I, I realize that there was a um, government response to this and mm-hmm. warning about people showing up there. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what's about to happen, but hey, yeah. here we are again. Area 51. Area 51. Area 51. Area 51. Yes, it's a... Uh, yeah, the reprise. Mm. Well, we, okay. Here's my thought on this because... Okay, go. You know, the way to think about this is why is this something that we might be interested in? Why is, why is, why is our... Um, uh, and this it seems to be sort of a, a central urban legend, at least in the United mm. States, Area 51, all these sorts of things going on. Sure. And we want to think about what, how to sort of think about this outside of whether it is true or not, but why it might catch our attention, why it might be something that we are, could be preoccupied with. Why are all these TV shows about UFOs? Right, why, and there why, are yeah. a lot are of lots. those shows. If you, I mean, just, you know, so many channels out there, but you kind of, it's all about ancient aliens and aliens and where mm-hmm. and UFOs and things that mm-hmm. that uh, we don't have a lot of real proof about but people seem to be really gravitating toward those things and one element of the narrative that i think seems really important is that somebody knows something and isn't telling us there right. is an inherent there is a mystery inherent in the aliens themselves but also the possibility of somebody knowing something and not telling us right and the government keeping secrets right. from us that that's an ongoing mm-hmm. theme in lots of different ways but certainly around this for sure. and just as an aside uh, I think they have a, a very naive faith in the power of our government right. to do anything properly and correctly right. and the idea that somehow they can maintain a secret such as this for, I mean I really think that is you know, you're giving yeah, away so too much. You're, <laughs> giving away too where, much credit. It's not. I see where you're going. <laughs> They're so inept they can't even keep a secret. So I don't why know. Do you know, they can keep it now. So I really I think that. you know. If history tells us anything, uh, <laughs> we would expect uh, <laughs> the cat would have been out of the bag a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, somebody would have found that. <laughs> well, I, d- I do remember that uh, Joe Rogan on his uh, podcast, the Joe Rogan Experience, had uh, a guy who worked at Area 51, Area 51. and uh, I, I can't recall his name right now, but. It, he, uh, he identified a number of things going on there and sort of really supported the idea that the government had found something, had found bodies, had found aircraft and so forth. Uh, the news, however, was always about, uh, you know, some aden- unidentified object and they found parts and metal and things like that. And that's as far as it got from the government side of it. Mm-hmm. I find it really interesting that when the topic came up, so many people responded. Mm. Well, this is the part where we're... In, in um, if we haven't lost the two death row inmates at this point, whoever else is listening, this is the part where we, we, we may lose them because I'm, okay. I'm you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a creature of, of, I'm a one-trick pony, a creature of habit, and I have a certain way of looking at the you're world. Gonna, you're going to talk about psychoanalytic. I am, I am. I'm going to, a psychoanalytic this, this exploration of Area 51. Yeah. I'm, I'm, and, and, I'm and good I, with that. And if I could sum it up in just one, one phrase, which I hope we can unpack. Okay. Is that we have... Um, we have uh, we all know what area 51 is okay and it is mom okay we can uh, end there if you'd like and we <laughs> stop there let it there go, go. Area 51 is mom <laughs> all right you <laughs> no but you said unpack so i think that's going to take just so a moment unpack, here yeah, for unpack. us to kind of figure that mm-hmm. out there's something uh, sort of primal there going on with us well and when we think about this, and there's this guy by the name Jean Laplanche. Laplanche. Yeah. I had to, I did, I did, my French has oh, gotten that's, better. That's very French. Laplanche. Go. And uh, Jean, Jean Laplanche is a um, a French. Actually, he's not. He's from Jersey. He's not. I'm kidding. kidding you no, know, it's typical. All right, go no, ahead. He's from no. France. <laughs> and he has this notion of the, what he called the enigmatic object. Okay. And what he said is is is, is that um, you know if you can think about the birth of subjectivity. The part of which you become, you begin to become you, and that begins um, probably somewhere in gest- gestation, certainly in birth, all that sort of stuff. Right. But it involves very early on a tight orbit between you and the maternal object. 
And that doesn't have to sure. be mom, but usually it's mom. Yeah, of course. So there is this dance that goes on, and, and, and it is um, just as mom is growing you, you're growing a mom. There's a mutual growing of each other that occurs in this sort of dance between baby and child. And Laplanche says, there's something about that, though, because the way we see both ourselves, the world, and the people in it are going to be um, affected by both the quality and quantity of that experience. Okay. But there are certain things that are certainly universal, regardless of quantity and quality. And that is you as a nascent subjectivity, you as as um, uh, someone whose nervous system is immature is in the presence of someone who has a mature nervous system, and they generate a tremendous amount of mystery. Mom, adults, and thereby the entire world generates a certain enigma. Okay. And this is where it gets even funkier, because. Laplanche says, not only are we then sort of um, um, mugged or the shadow of this enigmatic o object falls across us and we are um, uh, jointly confused, whatnot, we are also enticed. We yeah. begin to sort of, um, we learn to not only it, it survive and to accept, but even to be invested in these dances of mystery. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're really trying to figure out some things in mm -hmm. these early stages, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of mystery. We don't know, and we're trying no, to, no. who is this object uh, mm -hmm. that's taking care of me? What is going on in the environment? And the building of the mm -hmm. own, their own uh, personality and structure and so forth. So a lot of things to discover in that process. And we learn to begin to invest in those discoveries. So we have a, um, a hunger for mystery. 